Philippines, where welcomes the Citizen Science GIST. Hey everyone, Tim Hawthorne here with the Citizen Science GIS RU site. I'm Christy Visaggi, I'm a lecturer at Georgia State University. I'm a co-PI of this RU. Hey guys, it's Lane, I'm the Senior Research Coordinator. My name is Nicholas Altizer, I'm a Program Assistant Coordinator. Hey, I'm Christine Musary, and I'm one of the Program Assistant Coordinators. Hi Dan, I'm Hani, marine biologist from Belize. Hi everyone, I'm Robert Hernandez, GIS technician, also from Belize. Uh, here from the Hi, it's Saturday. I'm Hannah. My name is Ashley Little. I'm Caleb. I'm here with the Marine Debris Team. I'm Sarah, and I'm Amanda. Hi, I'm Jasmine. And I'm Jake. I'm here with the Flooding and Disaster Management Track. Today we had a meeting with the Village Council and the Chairman of the Council. Um, we went over a lot of what we as teams are doing, um, getting community feedback on the preliminary steps that we've taken so far. Um, but we hope to have sort of active um, input as, as we go along in the process. So um, we hope to continue the dialogue as we go forward. Yeah, when we first got here, our main main plan was to spend kind of the first week just going out to this community and talking to all the community members to make sure we would kind of model our work around what they actually needed. So, um, like when we came in here, we were thinking that the biggest problem with flooding was probably going to be structural damage and damage to property. And we found out that in reality, the main issue is just that the drainage system is not very well maintained to the point that they have lots of standing bodies of water where um, mosquitoes are bred and lots of disease comes from it and a lot of the community members were mainly focused on those kinds of concerns. So. Here today, Celine has agreed uh, for Hamanasi to partner with us so that we can do things like collect information about marine debris as they're raking it up on the beach, especially after it being such a storm, um, to see what the composition of the debris is and the density. I am excited to learn the Likewise, to have our eyes on the farm and learn it as well and connect it to the property for us to be able to see the trends as to what, what is being washed up on our beach over the years. So, when it comes to garbage that we wash over the shore, we walk the beach first in the morning and plastic, woods, driftwoods, coconuts, we absorb them for the plastic. Our recycling bin. Hey everybody, this hey. is the flooding and disaster management team. Uh, <laughs> we just got a golf cart to help our data collection go a little bit smoother. Or bumpier, uh, depending <laughs> on how you look at it. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have the maps up and running by uh, the end of the week. Okay, thanks. Yep. <laughs> the structure that we have here today, um, we're going to do primary construction material. It is wood. Um, roof type, you can see that it's corrugated metal. For occupied, we're not quite sure, so we're going to put occupancy on no room. Um, the use of the structure is residential. You can see the number of floors is one, and it is elevated. In addition to looking at all of the structures and the roads, we're also looking at the different qualities of the culverts. Uh, we have a date last maintained field, so what we hope to happen have happened is have people come in and clean these out and write in that on this date, say February 17th, 2017, this culvert was cleaned up and that it doesn't need to be cleaned up for maybe another couple months, or People can also write in the comments section, hey, this culvert hasn't been cleaned in over a year. I need it to be cleaned. And then someone can hopefully come and, and fix that for them. So, Some helpers come out and collect it with us. <laughs> They're a little camera shy. <laughs> we woke up bright and early and started mapping out all the structures and collecting all the attributes about them. And we've just about finished, except for a couple that we couldn't get to. We are doing a sampling method using a quadra. And what we have here is a meter square quadrant and what we're looking for is debris in each square. Um, then on our iPad we um, calculate with the primary type of debris, the secondary and tertiary type of debris and then we document how many pieces of each type of debris we see. How many pieces are that? One, two, three, four, four. Yeah. So we, they're by, they're done by what we five. call binning. Yeah. So yeah, so we're going to group that with this one. So we select two to five. It done. Metal aluminum. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we had these guys help us um, collect some community perceptions today. We had like four or five people um, talk to the chairman and on the way we picked up all these bottles and we're planning to make it into uh, a trash bin. <laughs> so, cool. Yay recycling! Yay! <laughs> I'm accompanied by Karim, Zidane, and 
And so we're just having a little bit fun with the drone today, shooting up in the air, gathering some imagery. What do you guys think so far? The drone is very cool. Yeah? It's yeah. awesome. It's cool? Oh, do you guys that? It makes the drone go higher. And when you pull it down, it goes lower. Right. Right. All of our work is open source. We believe fully in the idea that this data is for the people and should be shared by different organizations and researchers abroad because that sharing allows for creativity, allows for ingenuity, and allows for more teamwork. And that's what we're really all about. Everyone in this country, everyone around the world needs to collaborate in order for us to make a global change in order for us to have a successful global initiative. So if everyone collaborates and shares their data, then we can all actually come together as more than just one country or one school. We can come together as one world and we can really make a big difference. We have several exciting things. One is up-to-date, high-resolution drone imagery shot by our DJI Phantom 3 drone. Incredible resolution of the entire village of Hopkins. It's a really exciting uh, thing that we're able to share as part of our collaboration. Secondly, we have a set of maps and analyses related to marine debris washing up on shore, and also uh, perceptions of marine debris hotspots and residents in the, in the village of Hopkins as well. Finally, we have a flooding and disaster management set of analyses and maps. That includes a detailed survey and census of every single structure in the village of Hopkins. Let me repeat that. Every single structure in the village of Hopkins has been mapped by our team and with community members, including local youth. One of the things that's down the pipeline we're working on with different resorts and different members of the council is a longer term geospatial STEM training program that engages youth. So we're going to have some more exciting announcements coming up very soon about the next steps in this research. Hopkins is excited about data collection, we'll have information about buildings, we'll have information on debris, we'll have information on flooding areas, culverts. It's amazing to see that Hopkins is going to be a smart community. Thanks to the Citizen Science GIS, we get started.